Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Assembling Titans. It's episode four officially. The Tennessee Titans play the Atlanta Falcons in Atlanta uh, this Sunday, the 29th um, at noon uh, or at one there, Eastern time. But anyway, uh, this week's episode, we're going to be obviously every week we break down, you know, the opponent that the Tennessee Titans are going to face. Um, and they face uh, a pretty good Atlanta Falcons team that, you know, for the past few years, they know how to do one thing. They know how to play offense and they have probably the best receiver in the NFL on their roster and great complimentary pieces uh, surrounding them. On defense, they implement a 5-2 scheme, basically a 4-3 with an interchangeable end coming in. Usually that guy is Vic Beasley. Um, they got a new acquisition from the Chiefs, Allen Bailey, a uh, good run stuffer last year, but uh, starting off rocky this year. But let's go linearly. Let's start on offense uh, like I usually do, um, starting off with the head honcho, you know, as I like to call the quarterbacks, and with Matt Ryan, the veteran, the former MVP back in the 2016 season. Um, I mean, the best way to describe him just as a player and currently what I see on tape is just a rhythmic uh, passer. You know, once he's in rhythm, he's very hard to stop. Um, you know, I, if I do see anything, any issues right now, I see maybe he's a bit, you know, slower in his uh, processing. Uh, some of his passes are a little bit high, especially early in games when he's not in rhythm. But, you know, I see no drop off in terms of, you know, Matt Ryan and how he can orchestrate an offense. Um, I think that he's doing an awesome job. And um, and before I keep on going, one thing that I wanted to imp implement more in these breakdowns were was fantasy value because fantasy football is a phenomenon. I'm not sure how long it's been going on, but it's something that people do play um, and it's something that's important to certain people. So. I'm, I'm going to mention some of the fantasy type of people as I'm breaking down some people that might uh, have some success in the fantasy league. Matt Ryan is a person that I wouldn't start him, but if you need, uh, you know, some, some depending on what type of league you are in, he could give you a good solid 16 to 20, 21 points this week. Cause I see him and Austin Hooper and Calvin Ridley, as I'll get to, having some good connections in this game versus this Tennessee Titans defense. But moving forward, if Matt Ryan gets hurt, there's Matt Schaub that's on the bench who watching his tape from preseason and these past preseason games, just watching him play. Um, obviously, he's not the player he was in Houston during the glory years, um, but he's a player that knows the offense, um, doesn't have the same zip. He's very similar to how I talked about um, Brian Hoyer versus the Colts uh, a, a couple weeks back um, about how you feel when he enters the game. Not much of a real threat, but somebody that, you know, he's a, he's in the NFL for a reason. Um, shifting to the running back position, Devontae Freeman, um, Edo Smith, and the fullback Keith Smith um, with King John Barner, Barner as well. So uh, Barner looks like uh, he didn't practice today either. He's Today's Thursday, so he, he's been missing some practices. I'm not sure if he'll suit up for this game. Edo Smith had a concussion last week. I think he'll be ready to go. Not sure nothing's confirmed, but I believe that will be the uh, the end-all, be-all at the end of the week. Edo will go. Uh, uh, Ken John might be out. And then Freeman, obviously, is their kind of, you know, workhorse back that He's not the player he was, um, you know, during that Super Bowl run and a few years ago. Some injuries kind of slowed him down, but he's a he's a back that still runs physical, low center of gravity. They use him a lot as a pass catcher out of the backfield. Um, love him on outside zone plays and getting him on the edge. And I think that's his most successful types of runs are those outside zone runs and that's that's how they'll do it they love to run left right doesn't matter uh, they probably see more success on the right side um that left side of that offensive line is struggling right now um but you know like i said i just think that you know the this as we talk about this team 
you know, you just can't help but have the sense of a team that is on a downward trend in terms of their players. They're going to need a reboot very soon. But as far as this game and how the Tennessee Titans are playing, they certainly have a chance. Um, shifting to the tight ends, Austin Hooper, um, the former Titan, Luke Stalker. Uh, and those two guys work well together to me. A great run blocker and Luke Stalker who can still catch passes out of, you know, um, when he runs routes, still a solid guy. Physical. Um, I think he's he's actually, to me, a better fullback than their traditional fullback they have in Keith Smith. I think he's still a solid run blocker, but I feel like uh, Luke Stalker at the point of attack is probably a top 10 run blocking tight end. Um, and Austin Hooper, who I think will probably have a – because of how they employ Austin Hooper, I think that he might have a big game. And this is for the fantasy owners. He, he's a good double-digit 15-point guy for those who need maybe a flex that can get you that many points. Um, I think he'll probably score in this game. I think he'll, he'll, he'll make some plays in the middle of the field, down the scene, during certain uh, plays, like a let, uh, 12 personnel when I was watching tape versus the Eagles. They employ him on the other side of uh, Stalker on, on each side. And then they run this quick little one, two, three slant to Hooper, and he gets the ball almost every time, you know. And that that's one of their more more of their favorite plays on second down, just to catch the defense slipping, probably suspecting the run, you know, second and short. So I think Austin Hooper is the type of player that could have a big game, uh, just simply not because he's beating anybody, you know, one on one mossing anybody, just simply because of based on scheme and timing. You know, Titans have to be ready for that. Um, and, you know, it's going to be a Dean Pease and, you know, uh, Atlanta Falcons uh, offense chess match, Matt Ryan chess match. And I think that, uh, you know, based off experience, it could go either way. Um, offensive line starting with, you know, they got Carpenter at the left guard position, Alex Mack, uh, Jamon Brown, McCary, um, Matthews and I think the offensive line is struggling right now. I mean, I, I don't think there's a spot that's that's really you know stable right now within that offensive line. I think the left side has some issues. Um, the the right side is a little bit better. McGarry is playing the right tackle is playing decent for a rookie right now. Um, you know, I just feel like that's a place where the Tennessee Titans can take advantage. Um, whether it's using games and stunts to confuse that offensive line or just one-on-one -on -one winning your one-on-ones and just get into the quarterback. I think that should be an advantage for this game, and hopefully it is for the Tennessee Titans. Right receiving core, I mean, without, you know, it be spoken, you know, Julio Jones is a type of player that, you know, doesn't matter who's guarding them, can make plays. Um, I think that this is the type of game where, do you say he's going to go off? I'm not necessarily sure that Julio Jones has an amazing game. I think he'll, he'll almost be like a, a compliment um, based on how the, I think the Titans will play him. I think the Titans will uh, pretty much try to take Julio Jones out the game and say, beat us with somebody else. And they'll have faith, they'll have faith with in Logan Ryan covering Muhammad Sanu in the slot. And then Adora Jackson is going to have to find a way to, uh, you know, keep the reins on, you know, Calvin Ridley. And for that reason, not necessarily total reason, but I think that Calvin Ridley will have a good game. Um, I think just simply because of how the the matchup and how coverage will lean to Julio's side, that Calvin Ridley is going to have a good game. He's a technician. Um, he's a guy that I thought that would take some time to, to, to be successful in this league and thought he was a little bit on the frail side, but he's gotten a little bit bigger. Um, Bigger, bigger and stronger, and he's definitely uh, tightened up his route running for NFL uh, uh, opposition. And I think that this is the type of game where because of how the coverage will slant and his matchup in particular, Calvin really is going to have a big game just simply because of the things I said. He's, a bigger, he's bigger than the corner that's going to be guarding him. He's more of a technician. Um, and that's where uh, Matt Ryan's reads will take him mostly to him and Austin Hooper. So another fantasy point, if you got 
Calvin Ridley, you know, as a as a as a flex, you know, you might you might like that matchup uh, this week. Um, and other guys like Justin Hardy, complimentary Muhammad Sanu. Everybody knows who follows me knows that I like Muhammad Sanu. Just very sure-handed, big body guy, versatile. You know, he he be using a multitude of ways, whether it's throwing the football in the backfield, you know, on jet sweeps, reverse anything. I think he's a, a you know jack of all trades type of player. Um, and I I really like the receiving matchup with the with the Titans. Like I said, it's going to be a chess match with Dean Pease and Matt Ryan. You know, um, and then, you know, obviously the linebackers uh, on the Titans side, Jayon Brown, the middle linebackers, Wesley Woodyard, whoever is calling the plays. Um, but it's going to be a chess match, and it's really going to be about timing, who calls the right play at the right time. Um, so I think I think this game, overall, before I shift to uh, the Tennessee Titans offense, I think the Titans have a, a huge opportunity. You know, this isn't the first time where I've said that I think they're going to do good. Um, hopefully they don't let me down. I think this is a Derrick Henry game. I think this is a Derrick Henry and uh, Delaney Walker game. Just like I said, you know, Calvin Ridley and, you know, uh, Calvin Ridley and Austin Hooper will have a good game. I think Delaney Walker and Derrick Henry should have good games versus this team, versus this defense. I mean, starting off with, you know, Grady Jarrett on their defensive line, he's their biggest most physical player. He's extremely disruptive. Um, I think that he has a lot of the Kenny Clark, a lot of the, he has traits of all of the top defensive tackles in this league. And to me, he is. And I think that that's, that sentiment is shared around the league. This is an, an extremely physical and punishing defensive tackle that's going to find his way in the backfield versus this offensive line, probably quite often in this game. Um, um, but not as often as you might think just due to how the Tennessee Titans will probably try to run away from them. You know, if you want positive plays, if, if your um, objective is to have positive plays, just like you try to every play, you look where the safeties are, every play you should be looking where Grady Jarrett is, be looking where, where Big Beasley is, um, at times Adrian Claiborne, I know that these are defensive tackle, defensive ends on their team. Uh, Adrian Claiborne can rush from the inside as well. Allen Bailey, the guy that I mentioned earlier, uh, they acquired from, you know, he was a free agent, played for the Kansas City Chiefs. Great run stuffer, pretty much predominantly a run stuffer. He, could, he, he has a good assortment of pass rush moves, but really excelled at run stuffing last year. Not as good. It's kind of flip-flop this year, more so – being used as a pass rusher and he's he's been he's been he's been moderately good at that this year not as good at, at run stopping um at the linebacking core campbell Deion jones um those type of players and crawford on the offense on the defensive line as well good good solid size for the interior defensive line but once you start getting into the edge guys tack and kinley these guys they're a little bit lighter in weight and they're not as good in coverage and where our linebackers usually lined up in the middle of the field. That's why I think guys like John Smith, Delaney Walker, because he's obviously the start, the starter should, we should exploit these linebackers inability to cover. So it could be somewhere where Dan Quinn has to change up his lineup where he has more defensive backs on the field. Guess what? That still bodes well for Derrick Henry. You know, I think once we get our guys going, once we get these tight ends on these on these lighter linebackers, uh, once we get these uh, offensive linemen pulling it out in space, I think it's the Derrick Henry show. And I even think, you know, obviously a running back for the Tennessee Titans, Deion Lewis as well. He's small in stature, but, you know, all he has to do is run behind people. So I really think this is a good opportunity for the Titans to, to really show what they can do. And Marcus Mariota to show – that there's a game plan in place, and yes, it's a game plan in place, and showing the the ability to adapt, because yes, we say this looks good on paper, but what happens when something doesn't go right, and what is the decision that Marcus Mario is going to make? It's it's much like being you know a parent or working any type of nine to five you know blue collar job. You know we have a certain stipulation in the structure of how something is supposed to go. 
but it takes a certain type of individual to get a team out of a, a space based on his acumen, his, you know, his uh, moxie, his, you know, his gall, you know, and that, that's what I want to see from Marcus Mariota. I know the things that I'm saying is not going to happen perfectly, you know, just like the coaching staff does. not But what is Marcus Mariota going to do when they, you know, we were expecting Campbell on, you know, Delaney Walker in this situation, but now we have, you know, Kazi or, you know, Desmond Trufant, and I haven't even got to the secondary. What are you going to do then when that's your safety valve? You know, so I think certain matchups, Delaney Walker, guys that are underneath the knowledge that Adam Humphreys is going to bring, you know, him playing the Atlanta Falcons uh, for, for several years when he was with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You know, the Falcons haven't changed any. So certain situations, they're going to be very predictable. Uh, just like A.J. Brown, I think this should be a good game for me. Underneath guys should prosper in this game. If they don't, it's, it, you know, it's, it's unfortunate. Um, guys like, you know, we know that Keanu Neal, unfortunately, is out for the season. Like, you know, like that player coming out of Florida a few years back. But, you know, uh, they got they brought somebody up from the practice squad, uh, Carter, um, who a um, very physical player. Um, I think he'll probably see some snaps. Denver Broncos had him prior. They were even thinking about moving him to inside linebacker. So that just shows his physicality as a safety. Um, you got Bleedy Ray Wilson if he'll play, former Titan. Uh, Isaiah Oliver, who is a, you know, a young player, long, number 26. Very physical player, very physical, lanky. Um, and I think that he'll match up with Corey Davis a lot. And that will be a good matchup there. So, um, But like I said, he's a young player, so I, I wouldn't stray away from that challenge. Desmond Trufant on the opposite side. I think the Titans will try to avoid him at all costs. Um, he was a guy that, you know, um, I wasn't, I'm going to be honest, I wasn't big on, I wasn't huge on, I thought he was just an athletic type of guy, but he's, he's made the transition in my eyes that, you know, some, some certain players, when you have that knock of being an athletic guy, you have to refine your technique and you, and you really have to, you know, bring a different type of physicality and mindset when you step on the field. And I think Desmond Trufano has done that. And for that reason, Tennessee Titans should probably stay away from his side as much as possible. Um, and I just think overall, Kazi, he's a physical player. He's been he's been sent on blitzes and been asked to do a lot in that defense. Put him in certain situations where his grades aren't that good in terms of coverage and run, run fits. You know, that's somewhere the Titans can take advantage as well. But like I said, I just think physicality, going back to that physicality and underneath and, and controlling the middle of the field, for the Tennessee Titans will be important. Um, and defensively, you know, I think that, you know, ha having anybody but Julio Jones beat you as well as having like, you know, obviously, um, you know, cover the inverts to kind of confuse Matt Ryan as much as you can, you know, you're not going to do it much. Malcolm Butler will probably be on Julio Jones for the times that you do have to go, man. And those are probably the times where Matt Ryan is going to try to go to him. So if you have a play call, a defensive play call, where you can, you know, kind of um, bait Matt Ryan into thinking he has one-on-one, -on -one, you know, with a Malcolm Butler or even a Calvin Ridley on whatever corners they have, Butler is probably going to, like I said, is going to be on Jones, Ridley. Um, Jackson is going to be on Ridley and, if you can bait him to think that you have a man coverage going on, he's going to take those every time. And when you think that he's going to take it and you bait him and have safety coverage or somebody underneath to kind of, you know, exploit that because he's going to take that. I guarantee it. If you can kind of coverage disguise that he's going to take that bait every time. Um, you know, well, I haven't done a prediction for these games since week one and we won that one. Um, so, might as well do one now. I honestly think um, if Derrick Henry has, you know, honestly, if I, I, th I think if he has like 16 plus carries, you know, 16 to 18 carries, I think the Tennessee Titans win. I don't think he needs much. Um, 16 to 18 carries, um, I think the Tennessee Titans win this game. I would say 100 yards. I don't even think he necessarily needs 100 yards. He just needs a, a – touches 
And when he gets his touches, I believe that that indicates that this game is going the way that it needs to go. If he gets to 16 to 18 touches, um, I believe the Tennessee Titans can win this game 24-10, 24-17. Um, I think they'll make enough plays on defense. I think that, yes, who will, will probably dominate the middle at times. Calvin Ridley will make some insane plays, and Julio Jones will bail them out. But when it comes down to it, it's a physical game. If Tennessee Titans return to physicality, regardless of their quarterback play, regardless of their offensive line pass protection, they win this game by a score to 24-17, 24-10. If the Tennessee Titans um, do not employ the physicality uh, that is Derrick Henry and take advantage of this smaller linebacker core and be clever within that, mindset then this game will probably be not I'm not going to say it's going to be a blowout but it's going to the Falcons are going to win you know that's just that they have enough firepower and it, is, it just comes down to it like the defense can only stop somebody for so long until like the bayou breaks you know yeah I mean that's to that's pretty much it I've seen it many times with this Tennessee Titans team and just teams in general you know, a defense will stop somebody for so long, but if the offense isn't taking advantage of those extra possessions, the other team eventually, you know, you know, catches up, you know, to what's happening. And that's how the game works. You kind of got to – offense has to stay ahead of the defense's resilience. Defense can stop a team five straight times. If you don't do anything with it, the next three, you know, the next three that offense can start running, excuse me, so, you know, in conclusion, really think this is going to be an exciting game. Falcons in their 5-2, basically cover three, 4-3 three defense. Titans trying to find themselves on offense. Um, Titans defense trying to sure up that late game run game, you know, run defense, I should say, late game run defense. It just becomes sharper all around, you know. Um, you know, add English to everything you do. You know, I, I should, you know, that's something that if there was some advice I would give Marcus Mariota and really this offense in general, just add English, add a little whatever, mm, whatever you deem as English to everything you do. Add a little more excellence, add a little bit more grit to everything you do. You know, and, you know, obviously the offense has to get that, that English down pat. The defense has to sure up some certain lapses here and there, um, you know, and that Falcons offense is going to remain, you know, one of the top offenses until somebody gets injured. They're still going to, they, they're still a walking as in NBA terms and basketball terms, they're a walking bucket. That means that at any time they can, they can be a team that can drop 40 on you. you know, no joke, you know, because of the type of players they have, type of skill sets that those players um, possess. So Tennessee Titans are going to have to get it together, you know, and, and, and really, you know, they've had all week to, you know, scout these players and kind of know what they can do. And that special teams game where Matt, the older kicker, Matt Bryant, you know, we've seen older kickers be inc inconsistent this year. He's, he's had his ups and downs. Um, so I think um, some other things that I was watching on tape was just, seeing those offensive linemen, they're very predictable. Um, and, and this is something that a lot of people do. Is, and I don't think it's something new, but, you know, Matthews and McGarry is very consistent. He's, he's consistent. McGarry is very consistent in his stance. Matthews will give away plays at times based on the stance. His left, left tackle, right, left outside foot will be parallel to the line of scrimmage during run or slightly back. But when it's passed, it, you can tell his pass set is very prominent. And you see that a lot with players. A lot of times you can tell if it's a runner pass, whether or not that tight end, if it's maybe 11 personnel or 12, whatever, the tight end's block. If you see the tight end block, it gives you a good indication that it's run, but then he could also be there for extra protection. So little minor things like the tackles, footwork, really kind of helped me. Um, and really, you know, I did something on my Twitter page live sh kind of showing that. And, and once I watched it a little bit more, 
there's more consistency consistency to what I said than even on Twitter. When that left leg is further back in that stance, good indication that it's a pass. Another thing on their on their special teams units, um, on the kickoff team, a lot of times those guys in the middle aren't as disciplined in their lane. So if the Titans are watching tape, they'll see that in the middle of their kickoff team, at times, instead of staying in their lane before they can, you know, first, you're supposed to run in your lane and then submerge at the correct timing. A lot of times those guys get lazy and jumbled. So that could be a, a, a area the Titans take advantage there in the kickoff return game for them. So, like I said, thanks for tuning in. I'm going to wrap this up. You get wordy when you're manning it down. Uh, numero uno, you know, by yourself. Uh, when you're when you're doing it, man, I enjoy it, man. I love this. I love this game. Um, you know, enjoy you know working my way and sharpening my tools, watching film, and just you know doing the things that I do. You know, within my community, football related, that's going to prepare me for my future, where I'm trying to go. So, uh, you know, tighten up. Assembling Titans. We got the recap show coming. The podcast recap shortly after the game Sunday uh, and you know enjoy 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 the season enjoy this ride it's gonna be tough and you know there was some stories coming out this week as well I'm say to close you know Delaney Walker and people talking about you know subtly how more much more transparent he's being in these interviews and just talking to people now and, and I thought you know I've already said it. I'm I'm quoted saying that Delaney Walker and Guys like Nate Washington are some of the best free agent signings the Tennessee Titans have ever, you know, committed to. And I think really, to me, overall, you know, as far as community-wise and their leadership and their development, I don't know how many players come to a team, you know, and I'm going to go off on a tangent a little bit, but, but, you know, who cares? You know, Nate Washington, he came on this team – as like a fifth or fourth option and only had the tab of like the deep threat. And he literally became a reliable number one for this team. That's development. And that's the way that he progressed as a leader is like, I've never seen it. And it's, and it's something that I like to study on how that, that came about. Same thing with Delaney Walker. He was the second, third flute to Vernon Davis on that 49er squad years ago during that Super Bowl run. You know, he had 46, not even a tight end's number. You know, he was on kickoff return. Now, he, you know, he came to the Tennessee Titans and really just became a leader, became a number one tight end. And much like how we deemed Kevin Byard to be the top safety in the league, at one point, in my opinion, Delaney Walker was the best tight end in this league. He never got the credit, but he was because I saw a day in or – Sunday in, Monday in, Thursday in, and Thursday out, all those days. So it's like, you know, very impressive. And, and one of the things that kind of draws me and it attaches me from a, you know, from a, you know, doing something philanthropic or altruistic standpoint is with players is you try to win for these veterans. You try to win for guys like Cameron Wake and, and Delaney Walker. And if I don't, if I don't, if you're a young player on that Tennessee Titans team and you're not trying to win and get Delaney Walker a ring and Cameron Wake a ring as much as you want it as you, yourself, then I don't think you're doing it doing it right. And I think that, you know, back to what I was about to get to was he's been more open talking about back when he came in the league, this is how things were done, being more open. Guys were, you know, more pissed off for greatness, kind of like how I am naturally. I, I, I guess you can call me an old school guy now. I don't know, just having the mindset that, you know, we're not in here to hold hands and sing Kumbaya. I feel like I say that on every video. We're here to win, win rings, win championships. You know, that's what it's about. Why are you playing the game? So that you can post on Instagram, you know, you know, that I, I'm in the league. You know, there's nothing wrong with social media. I don't want to be, this to be taken out of context. Sure, you can be, a, you can show everything. But at the end of the day, what are you doing when you come to work? Are you is winning a championship the number one objective? You know, um, so you know, I, I tend to agree with you know 
you know, what he's talking about there from a real life standpoint, you know, so uh, I thought that was important to mention simply because, you know, it, it's something that's a time stamp within this game prior to playing the Falcons. It really happened this week. And I feel like I agree with those sentiments. I agree with his opinion on how it is. I'm not going to say what it should be, but, you know, I know that, you know, that that's what drives me. Some Titans, some great players, some Titans greats have played for this franchise, but they left without a ring. And I just hate that. And, I, and you know, I'm the type of guy, once I get inside that building, that that's one of my motivations, you know, that the guys that are on this team um, that's worked hard, you know, that are veterans, um, that's meant so much to the community. They deserve every fiber of your being to try uh, to win a championship, to, to put in your work, to do your due diligence, to make moves and put them in the best situation. That's what you want for players. You want them to be on the franchise and you try to make their experience the best experience on a team that they've ever, ever had. Now, this is a profession and this is the NFL and this is life. Everything doesn't go the way that you want it. But at the end of the day, and it's not to say that people aren't, but let's show it. Let's show it more. Let's let's have some sense of urgency. Let's be professionals. You know, let's show some passion. You know, some, you know, and if it's not, you know, affecting the team negatively, let's do it, you know. So that's all I gotta say. It's similar Titans. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you like this, please literally like it, um, thumbs up, comment, share subscribe. Thanks so much. God bless. Have a great rest of the week. Until next time.